Hello world, greatgeezapyramid.com. What you're looking at is the subterranean chamber. And if you go to this website, we can get some other pictures we're going to help discuss today. First off is this right here, which is documenting the piles of dirt and the frequency, which I will tell you when you go to that website, you can find this picture. Got a flat surface here and then a rough surface from there back to the, the section before the rock, uh, the pre-subterranean chamber. So if you look at that on a map, that is this section over here. It's where we were looking at down that hallway. The rock is located right here. Right now the rock is located right here because they've moved it, but it, it was there, and that's kind of important to the map, but not to the... Well, you'll get the idea. And the other rock is located right down here. And between those two rocks is um, the reaction. The, the, well, at least the, the primary reaction. The rest of the stuff is just catalyst. What we're going to be looking at is down here, down this hallway right down there. Luckily, Mr. Um, Forrester was kind enough on one of his videos, if you go about... Um, Go to his. Should pull it up here where you can see it. Right there, that guy. Look him up online. You spell his name F O R. Sorry, F O E R S T E R. And then his video, Lost Ancient High Tech of Egypt Before the Pharaoh, Part One. Now I do agree it was definitely before the Pharaoh. Um, and had nothing to do with Pharaoh, but that's a I'm not going to say my theory, I just agree with him. Um, so, when in his video here, which I'm going to make full screen as you look at it, we will notice that when he looks into this, let me get it right there, you can see ripples in that wall, and I urge you to look at it on your own thing. You can see ripples in that wall, and as he turns around, you can see sediments on the ground, just like the other way. Now, this is more current day than the other one, and I'm interested if these ripples seem to stop or if they continue down, because that will be important to the math, but it does help me to see what was going on, and I'm going to kind of point that out to you right now, what was going on. So, in the system that we have here, the hydrogen is going to be bubbling off this rock, just like as if it was electrolysis, and the oxygen bubbles off this rock. Now, in the whole system, the water level winds up being skimming the, the top of this surface. Now, what I can't draw very well, but I should have accented, is this side is a tiny bit lower than that side, okay? And that is so that the hydrogen is basically within this bubble up here, while the oxygen is going to be bubbling out of the water and riding across the top of the water here. The water itself will kind of be at that same level and filling everything below it. Now, the oxygen, what I also didn't really draw, and it wasn't in there, but it is in the picture that I didn't point out to you. I should, since I'm talking about it. In this photograph, when we look towards the back there, you can see a flat surface, and you can see a rough surface. And you can see it, well, you can't really tell here, but there's a rim around there. You can look at the photos. You can check it out for yourself. And there's a couple other photos where you can see some other things. That rim goes around the whole thing. I don't know if that was meant to accent it or if that's actually a necessary feature or if somehow that adds in the in the pulse. That would actually be kind of cool. But the oxygen, when it bubbles into here, it takes that as a foothold and works its way across this flat edge until it pops off. And when it pops off, it comes down as a hammer and slams, and when it slams, it's going to leave that sediment that you saw on the bottom and the frequencies it left it at.
And then when it comes into here, as it echoes to the room, it kind of does the same thing. Only in here they take advantage of it even more because they ribbed the edge of the cavern so that when that pulse comes through, it is working to either accent the compression and or accent the decompression, the cavitation. And either way, that is working to churn the hydrogen, which is brought back into this room, deeper into the water, either by mixing it with the water um, or by making the water turn into heavy water by sucking that proton in and turning it into a neutron. What, whatever the math going on, I'll, I'll let that work out to the CAD physicists, but they're doing work here, and the ultimate goal is to get that those protons embedded into the water in the way of neutrons. Going through here, it also pulls off some of the electrons to make those, what, what I did, I said protons intentionally, because when the hydrogen comes through here, the magnetic bubble, the separation, the geodesic center, helps to eliminate some of the electrons, also skewing the mass so that this is more negative. But by doing that, you get some protons in the mix. And those protons, because of all the bubbles coming up in the mixture, they wind up getting into the water and settling out into the top part of this shaft. Even though they're underground, they will settle out because of all the whole mixture. And then when this cavitation and pulse comes through, that sucks it into the mixture. And that's part of the features of the, uh, the dead end shaft. Oh, in, in addition to that, it does help with the math of the pool of the heavy water that's in here to have that uh, consistency. Um, 